Hey guys, how are you? I'm gonna do a tag video today. It is the Coffee Lovers book tag. The coffee book tag. Ooh. I am going to make sure I know the title before I put it in my title because I already forget. Anyway, the whole point of the tag is to um, relate different kinds of coffee to different kinds of books or reading experiences. I'm really, really excited that I came across this, so let's get right into it. And of course, I have coffee. So the first kind of coffee is black coffee. Not a coffee that I tend to drink, but I get it, right? Um, okay, so the um, coffee-related book question is to choose a book series that is hard to get into, but there are hardcore fans. And I could have chosen a couple things for this, but ooh, it's hefty. I chose The Lord of the Rings. Now, I think I've read through the first book once, but I couldn't get through any more of it. I probably never am going to. Um, it's just not my kind of thing. It's just not, and that's I think that's fine. Um, I understand the appeal to people, right? Anyway, there's no doubt that this language is hard to read. The material is very dense. It is a lot to consume. But there are absolutely massive Lord of the Rings fans all across the world. So I think that this is definitely a shoe in for that answer. This is the black coffee of literature. I don't know, maybe not. Ugh. Number two is Peppermint Mocha. So the task is to choose a book that is more popular during winter or the festive holidays, that time of year. And, and I chose Harry Potter. Um, I don't know why, but myself included and so many other people associate this book with winter and Christmas. I don't know why. Um, I, the books take place over an entire, not only a semester, but an entire year. Um, but I think everyone, I don't know why, maybe it's because there is a strong emphasis on Christmas and there's always stuff that happens during Christmas and things happen during Christmas holiday and people go home and there's just that kind of coziness that's described during the holidays. Maybe that's why, but I mean, maybe you don't agree with me, but I think that whenever I consider Christmas and winter, I always want to read Harry Potter. I didn't read that this year. I'm sorry. I was supposed to, like, with some friends, read the entire book series, and I never did. Number three is hot chocolate. So, obviously, a non-caffeinated drink, which is appropriate because the question is, what is your favorite children's book? Um, I actually want to do an entire video on children's books because we have so many because we've got, you know, children. So, but um, I think I nailed down one of my favorites here, which is Julia's, oh, it's huge, Julia's House for Lost Creatures by Ben Hotke. Um, a friend of mine gave this to my oldest daughter for her birthday, I think a couple years ago. Um, it is a really pretty book. It is all done with watercolor art. Um, it is about a young girl named Julia. Her house is on a traveling tortoise, see? Um, and it, um, travels. So the start of the book begins with Julia's house came to town and settled by the sea, right? Okay, there it is. And you can see like that great watercolor. Look at that sky. Look at the watercolor. Look at it. Look at it. Anything with watercolor, I'm a sucker for. And I mean, my favorite page in the book is this image of her in her living room with the fire burning and the wall covered with all the good stuff and then the tea and the comfy armchair. I mean, come on. On. That is just like my dream living room. Um, anyway, so she um, decides that her house is too large and too quiet, and she puts in a sign, puts out a sign outside saying that she, that all the lost creatures who've been like kicked out of their towns, like the the town troll, like the the goblins, anyone that's been ostracized can come live with her. And so, like, and this is like the middle of the book where all the creatures are outside waiting to come into the house. Take a drink every time you get too long-winded. Number four is double shot of espresso, um, which is more my ballpark of coffee, right? Um, it is to choose a book that kept you on the edge of your seat from start to finish. I, I, You may not have ever heard me mention this book on my channel, but it's a head full of ghosts by Bible Ball Tremblay. And I chose this because I read it in like one or two sittings, which I, can, I can't read books that fast with my life. Um, it didn't leave my side at all. I My heart was thumping. I felt like I was watching a horror movie. Um, it had this underlying feeling of dread the whole time. I thought it was so creepy and so disturbing. So this is my double shot of espresso bug. If you need a kick and you need something scary, something's gonna keep you going and truck it all the way through to the very end. Um, it, it's this one. The next one is just called Starbucks. So you're choosing a book that you see everywhere. 
Now, um, this may have been more everywhere, like, you know, three months ago than now, but I think I still see it a lot, and I haven't been buying any new books recently, um, so this may be a little out of date, like, you know, come on, I'm old, so I'm slow in the uptake sometimes, kiddos. I'm Choosing the Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon. It's, I know I see it in every bookstore, I see it in everyone's, like, top 10 lists, you know, it was, um, you know, in a lot of people's, like, December favorites, 2016 favorites, so I'm just gonna say this one because it's honestly the closest thing that I've got in my book collection right now to a book that was, like, hyped up everywhere recently. The next category is The Hipster Coffee Shop, so you are supposed to give an indie author or an indie book a shout out. And I am choosing The Circus in Winter by Kathy Day. I'm pretty sure that it came out before uh, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children because they have the same kind of setup where she, let me see, this book was published in 2004, so for sure. So she found these old photos of, um, hopefully you can see them, they're kind of grainy, of like images from old circuses and she wrote a novel around them um and unlike miss peregrine they're not edited in any way or or um um i guess creatively inspired they're all actual um photographs from um, old school circuses um, and so every chapter tells a different person's story about their um, um, I guess their experiences with this circus. Number seven is oops I got decaf <laughs> so it's choose a book that you expected more from and the disappointment is still there, unfortunately, and it is Disappearance at Devil's Rock by Paul Tremblay. So it's the second um, novel um, that he published after A Head Full of Ghosts, and I really just expected more. I liked it. It was fine. The ending, I didn't understand. Um, the whole thing kind of just fell apart a little bit for me, and I was really expecting the ending to be completely different and the story to wrap up in a completely different way, and it didn't, and my, I just, my excitement level dropped really hard after, like, the, you know, after 75% of the way through or so. Um, so I was kind of bummed. I was really expecting so much more from this. The last question is the perfect blend. So you're choosing a book that was both bitter and sweet um, and ultimately satisfying. And I am choosing Why We Broke Up by Daniel Handler. Um, I think, I mean, it, bitter. First off, it's bitter because it is about a couple who has broken up and um, we are, you know, reading from the perspective of the female and the relationship and all the reasons why we broke up. She's writing a letter and she left a box with all these memories inside at the doorstep of her former paramour. Um, but it's so sweet in that you are really getting the details and the touches throughout the story of what made the relationship so special in the first place. And it was just a really great book to read. There are beautiful images through the whole book. I mean, it's peppered with just little illustrations of all these little things that were found in the box that she left her, you know, old boyfriend. Um, all the little tokens in the relationship that are important to her and are important um, to tell the story of why she is leaving him. I mean, the story is just sexy and smart and real. It feels like a real, honest relationship. So I'm going to go ahead and say this is like the perfect blend. And I haven't read this book in a while and I'm afraid to because I'm afraid that I may not like it so much the second time around um, because in my mind, the memory of this book is so important. I read it in a really hard time of my life. So this book helped me through that time. So I'm afraid to read it because I may not like it and that would really screw me up. <laughs> so, but for now, this is what I consider my perfect blend book. Okay, guys, this is so much fun comparing books to coffee. I mean, come on, like, right? Um, <laughs> um, if you want to see more tag videos like this, let me down, know down below and subscribe if you want to see more content. Um, and let me see, what is the one that I want you guys to chime in to? Let's see. Okay, I want to know what your double shot of espresso book is. So what is the book that kept you on the edge of your seat from start to finish? Um, I'd love to see those recommendations because those are my favorite kinds of books, right? So, all right. Thank you guys again. I will see you next time. Bye.